earlier this year, I did have the opportunity to listen to tetraplegic Paul Lam, who spoke at a humanist event in the House, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I was very moved by the case which this very rational and very sane man made. Now, traditionally, the case uh, is based on the Oregon model of, as we've heard, and that kind of generally refers to people who have six months left, left to live, and that was the case in the Maris Bill. Now, I have some difficulty with that if we're going to look at this again, because I think there is a problem about being precise about life expectancy. And it's also the case that such a narrow position wouldn't help someone like Paul Lam. Paul has been living with his condition for 29 years. He's in intolerable pain, which sometimes can only be controlled by very strong medication, which blurs his consciousness and limits his life experiences. He wants the right to choose if he reaches a stage where he has no quality of life. I think we need to focus on the quality of life, the capacity for life, and the rational sound judgment of a person who makes such a decision. Life expectancy in itself doesn't tell us anything about suffering. So I think we should be considering assisted dying both in the context of terminal illness but also suffering and a lack of meaningful life, especially when we're talking about you know, progressive conditions, issues like locked-in syndrome, or, as I say, intolerable suffering. Now, I know that some people uh, have strong views about this and they're influenced by the church or their religious community, and I know that uh, those organisations encourage them to contact MPs, it's always going to be like that. Uh, I understand that. But the Supreme Court did ask this place to consider the case for changing the law. The Court recognised that it was a decision that only Parliament could make. And having listened to Paul Lamb and thought about it again, I think we should be wondering if things have moved on since 2015. I think the poll... That, uh, that was released by the, the My Death, My Decision group that says it's now about 88% support. I think that is significant. I'm surprised that people would want to ignore that. And of course, as the Honourable Member for Grantham and Stamford said, we are a democracy. It's our job to wrestle with these decisions, not to rely on the fears of particular groups. It's our job to make sure that we get the safeguards right. Now, it seems to me that the choice is simple. We can't stop assisted dying, but we can prevent legal assisted dying, which would be open, transparent and open to change and challenge. We can't stop assisted dying itself. Okay. Courage. Thank you, Mr. Deputy.